Hey guys, and welcome to Game Brain. Now today I want to talk about a peripheral that's probably been on your radar for a while, the Oculus Rift. The Oculus Rift is a new virtual reality gaming headset that's been a work in progress for quite some time, initially getting some crowdsourced funding through Kickstarter to the tune of about $2.4 million. Now, VR is not a new technology. Even back in the 80s, NASA was experimenting with VR headsets, albeit with primitive vector graphics by today's standards. I even remember VR attractions at amusement parks in the early 90s where you'd shell out a few bucks and be immersed in a virtual world of cubes and pyramids for three minutes. They were huge, clunky, and heavy machines back then, and only capable of these more abstract, simple visuals. However, even the idea of a consumer-level VR headset is not new. If you remember from my review on Flight Unlimited, a flight sim released for DOS in 1995, I mentioned a headset called the Virtual I.O. Eyeglasses that you could use with the game. While this headset was smaller and cheaper than the industrial size headsets I remember seeing in the early 90s, the I.O. Eyeglasses had a maximum resolution of 640x480, a narrow field of view, and you can even see in their own promotional video how much latency there was in the head tracking. After years of hype and promise, virtual reality has finally made it to the mainstream thanks to Despite their claims, the $400 headset did not usher in an era of mainstream VR, and almost 20 years later it still hasn't. However, the Oculus Rift aims to change this. Even in their Kickstarter video from 2012, they claimed a huge field of view, about 110 degrees, and very low latency head tracking. Two key attributes that contribute to immersion. Since 2012, prototype kits of the Oculus have gone out to developers for them to integrate support into their games, while Oculus continues working on the headset to eventually bring a consumer level one to market. At CES earlier this month, the Oculus Rift Crystal Cove prototype was released with better resolution, a better screen with less latency, and included the use of an external camera that can track dots installed on the headset. This improves the head tracking and adds the ability of the system to detect where the player is in 3D space on top of its already really solid ability to detect where the player is looking. This new prototype was named the Best of CES 2014 by Engadget.com. Another really interesting note about this whole story to me is John Carmack's involvement. Carmack is a legendary programmer and is notably almost solely responsible for the technology that drove the first person shooter genre into the mainstream in the early 90s, as he created the engines for Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and the Quake games. Early in 2012, as his own personal VR research was increasing, he got interested in the Rift. He implemented Oculus support in a re-release of Doom 3, and in December 2013, he actually left id, the company he co-founded more than 20 years ago, to become Chief Technology Officer of Oculus VR. Now, as disappointing as the history of consumer VR has been, I personally think that the Rift is going to be pretty big. Uh, it seems like the tech and the know-how is there. It may just come down to how developers actually use it. Um, and it may be a little dependent on the cost of the final device. I can see this thing being totally awesome for first-person shooters and driving games and especially like flight sims. Um, I mean, you could sit in the cockpit and look around at your environment and at the targets around you way faster and easier than having to, you know, use a joystick or something to swivel your viewpoint around. So it's going to be great for those kind of games. Now, would you want to play a Mario game or a Zelda game with something like the Rift? That I don't know. Alright, that's it for today's Game Brain. Let me know what you guys think about the Rift in the comments. Do you think it's just going to be another fad like the displays of the 90s? Just another piece of tech that'll be forever an enthusiast toy and not really a mainstream device? Or do you think this will actually make a broader impact on gaming? And as always, thanks for watching.